Lipoprotein-associated phospholipase A2, or LPPLA2, is an enzyme that's produced in the vascular intima. It's an inflammatory protein that's produced by macrophages in the intima, and it's produced in high concentrations in the plaques that build up in blood vessels. Um, but it's also found to travel in blood bound to low-density lipoprotein. In several uh, large studies, it's been found that patients with high LPPLA2 in, in circulation are at higher risk for future cardiovascular events, such as uh, myocardial infarction or a stroke. Um, and it's an inflammatory protein, um, so it can be thought of similarly to how physicians might think and use high sensitivity CRP. However, high sensitivity CRP is more of a marker of systemic inflammation, whereas um, LPPLA2 may be more specific for cardiovascular related in inflammation because it's highly expressed in plaques. There are two assays to measure LPPLA2 in circulation. The first is to measure a concent the concentration of the protein, and this is typically referred to in the literature as the mass assay. Um, that's kind of a misnomer because it really measures the concentration of the protein. The second assay, and that's the one that we have just brought up at Mayo Clinic, is an assay that measures the activity of the protein. We've found several years ago that there are several problems with the concentration assay. Um, and which is why we don't uh, test it here at Mayo. The first problem is that we found uh, from our own internal studies that uh, there was significant variability in patient test results um, when they were tested on different lots of the reagent. So uh, meaning there was really high lot to lot variability that was really unacceptable to us. Um, the second problem with the concentration assay is that uh, we found there was actually a, a significant pre-analytical problem and that had to do with the stability of the test result um, if the sample wasn't tested immediately after collection. So if the sample wasn't tested within about four hours of collection, um, but the sample was stored either at refrigerate um, temperature or even frozen at minus 20, we found that the um, concentration that was, um, was reported from the concentration assay could actually be up to 50% falsely elevated. Um, uh, just based on uh, the fact that the sample wasn't tested immediately. So because of these problems, several years ago Mayo Clinic stopped testing for the concentration assay because we weren't um, confident in the test results that were pr being produced. The new assay for LPPLA2 that measures the activity of the enzyme does not suffer from these same pre-analytical problems. Um, this assay was recently FDA approved in late 2014. And our internal studies show that um, patient test results are identical whether they're tested on one lot, lot versus the other, so we don't see the same lot-to-lot -lot variability. And we've also shown that um, sample uh, test results are the same whether the sample is tested immediately after collection or if the sample has actually sat uh, for longer periods of time, actually up to 30 days in our own studies. Uh, this is really important for physicians who um, don't have the ability to test LPPLA2 in their home facility. So if their hospital doesn't offer the test, uh, they may have to send out um, the test to a reference laboratory. And um, a delay in sample processing um, and sample testing um, has no effect on the LPPLA2 activity results. Um, it's also important for physicians who may want to add on testing um, to a sample that was already collected on a patient, let's say a few days before for a standard lipid panel, and now the physician wants to um, add on testing for LPPLA2 activity, uh, the test results are the same in those patients. So we're confident from our own internal studies that um, LPPLA2 activity, um, the assay is robust um, analytically and results are accurate um, and appropriate for um, clinical use and patient care. So LPPLA2 activity has been shown to be increased in patients um, who are at higher risk for future cardiovascular events. So it really should be used um, to augment um, such things like a basic lipid panel and traditional cardiovascular risk, risk markers. Um, and it can be either ordered along with the panel or it can be used more conservatively like uh, what's recommended in the current ACCAHA guidelines uh, for use of high sensitivity CRP or even calcium scoring um, where a physician is actually unsure of which risk category to place a patient in and are deciding on a treatment modality.
Um, it can be used uh, mainly in a primary prevention setting um, in patients who have no history of disease um, and no history of um, a cardiovascular event. But it's also sh been shown to have utility in the secondary prevention setting as well to predict um, uh, recurrent cardiovascular events. Physicians should be aware of, um, of some conditions in which um, LPPLA2 activity is, will actually be low, and that is in the case uh, when a patient is actually on treatment for statins, that will actually low, lower LPPLA2 activity. And in patients where um, uh, they've actually just had an acute event such as a, such as a heart attack, LPPLA2 activity will be low. So when a physician determines that a patient has elevated LPPLA2 activity, they may consider that patient at increased risk for future cardiovascular events, and they may want to take treatment strategies that would lower their overall risk. So such uh, treatment strategies may be to uh, start statin treatment if the patient already isn't on statins, or to increase the pharmaceutical dose of either statins or other uh, pharmaceutical agents. Um, otherwise, they could um, modify other lifestyle or dietary restrictions um, such that they lower, lower the overall risk of the patient's future chances of having a cardiovascular event.